MinIO has made some changes recently, which has a lot of people reevaluating their S3 compatible storage options. One alternative that's getting a lot of attention is RustFS. It's an Apache 2.0 licensed, fully open source S3 compatible object storage server written in Rust. In this video, I'll walk you through getting RustFS set up on TrueNAS right after a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Meter, the company rethinking how enterprise networks are built and managed. Meter delivers wired, wireless, and cellular networking in one integrated solution, covering everything from hardware and software to deployment and support. Instead of juggling multiple vendors and fragmented tools, you get one stack that's fast, secure, reliable, and scalable, whether you're a branch office or a data center. Thank you to Meter for sponsoring this video. Go to meter.com slash Lawrence Systems to book a demo. That's M-E-T-E-R dot com slash Lawrence Systems to book your demo today. Now we're gonna be installing this in TrueNAS, but I wanted to reference the documentation here to show first that there are other platforms that you can install this on. So even Windows, Mac OS, and a Docker install. Essentially the TrueNAS one is a template of the Docker install, but I wanted to point out the single node, single disk mode, which we'll be using. For doing this on TrueNAS, this is what you want because even though it has the other options within TrueNAS, generally speaking, and of course you may have some specialized way you're doing this, you're going to be installing it to one data set. So TrueNAS is going to handle all of the disks that are underlying. So you don't really need to choose these other modes, but it does have these other modes in case you were for some reason splitting it up between multiple disks, multiple drives, and you weren't having TrueNAS handle it, or maybe you are, or maybe you want it across different pools. So there could be some specialized use cases, but I think for most people, they just want their object storage in a single data set. So when we're setting this up, we're going to choose the single node, single disk, but feel free to read through the documentation if you have some specialized use cases. Now we're doing this in TrueNAS version 25.10.1, latest available here in December of 2025. And the first thing we need to do is create a data set to store RustFS. I'm going to add a data set. I'm going to call it RustFS demo. And I'm going to change it to the apps preset and hit save. There's not any other permissions you need to do. And there's not another directory you need to create because the settings and the buckets will all be stored right here. Now we're going to go over to apps. And we're going to click install for RustFS and go through the settings. I'm going to leave the application name and the version at default. This is where I said we were going to choose and leave it at the single disk node. Access key. I'm going to make my name the access key because this is your admin key for the web UI, not what you're going to be giving to the services that will be accessing it. We create those within the web UI. Scroll down a little further. Leave these all at default. The API port will be 30292. You can tie this to a specific IP if you have a need to do so. The web port will be 30293. I'm just going to use the default built-in TrueNAS certificate that's self-signed. Scroll down here to storage configuration, and we want to choose a host path for the data disk. Then we'll scroll down further. If you need to allocate more resources, CPU or memory, you would do that here. I'm going to leave this at default for this configuration and click install. Now that's installed correctly, let's open up the web UI, log on with those credentials we created. And the first step we're going to do is create a bucket. Because I have XEPNG set up and it does support S3, let's just run through a quick demo of tying it to that. We'll make the bucket name XCP, and you can choose if you want versioning or object lock, retention, compliance. These settings can all be set right here. For now, I'm just going to leave it at default. Now that we have a bucket, let's create an access key. So we'll go to add access key. It comes up with a random name for simplicity. I'm just going to call it XCPNG demo. I'll leave the secret as is. I'll give it a name. And I'm going to hit submit. Now it has my access key and my secret key. So let's run over to XCPNG and paste these in real quick. I'm going to name this my RustFS demo. The endpoint is 172.16.16.33. And there's our API endpoint port of 30292. I need to give it a bucket name and we called that bucket XCP. For the directory, I'm just going to put a slash for the root, put in our access key ID of XCPNG demo, and then paste in our secret. I'm also going to make sure I'm using HTTPS and check the allow unauthorized because this is a self-signed certificate. And we can see that it's enabled and working and I can click a test. The remote's working correctly. Let's run a backup real quick. All right, the backup ran successfully. So let's go ahead and take a look at RustFS. 
And included in RustFS is a web-based file browser so we can look and see the files. We can delete them. We can upload files. You have the ability as well to we'll go through like an object here. We can download them right out of the bucket. Now, this was enough to get you up and running with RustFS, but for those of you that are wondering, there's not any security on this, is there? No, not by default. It's actually quite permissive. And what I mean by that is for each access key I create. So I have this XCPNG demo key. And if I were to add another key or I were to add another bucket and we'll just create a bucket called XCP2, hit create, that key can access all the buckets. And each key I create by default can access all the buckets. And if you go back over here to the buckets themselves, I do like that if you go to the settings, the default access policy is private, but private to those access keys, which means if you wanna tighten up the security, we have to build policies. The way that works in RustFS is we have to go to the key itself, we hit edit, and we build an IAM policy. The default policy is essentially wide open, but if we put in the very specific IAM rules and we list out the bucket that we wanna have access to, this will build the restriction and the rules. Now, there's not a lot of documentation right now as of recording on RustFS's website, but IAM rules are common. They're not proprietary at all to Rust. They're standardized. You can find lots of examples out there and hint, hint, you can use some of the large language model tools in order to write these and help you go through them. But anytime you use, especially an example or a large language model, do double check that the permissions are doing what you want and that they're restrictive. So, you know, trust that it did it right, but please verify that it absolutely is right because bucket security matters quite a bit. I mentioned in the beginning of the setup that it only required a single data set. There's not a separate app versus data storage. So I want to show you what this looks like under the hood. We're in the data set we created and it creates this hidden folder called .rustfs.sys, but we can go in there and list out all the files, the configuration. And when it says bucket, that's not where the buckets are. That's just where more configuration information is. But if we go here, we can see the buckets themselves. And if we go into the buckets, they're just standard files as uploaded by whatever was using the bucket, in this case, XCPNG. So we can actually go through, get into all the different directories, see all the data that's within here. Now, a little bit of history about RustFS is that it started in 2023. The source code was released in 2024. And here we are in late December of 2025, it being a very popular project with a lot of development going on. So it's not as battle tested as MinIO or several other ones out there, such as Garage or SeaweedFS. I did take a look at Garage and SeaweedFS and I found them to be well, a lot more complicated. And after using RustFS, and you can find plenty of people talking about it and plenty of excitement around how fast it is, I did find it to be as easy and performant as they said. Now, I didn't do in-depth performance comparisons, but uh, all my testing so far preliminary has gone well. Now, have any of you been using it for longer? Because at some point, someone's put this in production. I don't have a ton of S3 object storage that isn't MinIO right now, but I know people who are not paying the license or using the full version of MinIO are definitely looking for alternatives. And this alternative seems to be a pretty good replacement, I feel, so far. But if I'm wrong, if you think Garage or Seaweed's better, let me know in the comments. Should I take a deeper look at those ones as well? Or is RustFS serving you well? And is this something you're willing to try? Or whatever those thoughts are, just leave them down in the comments below. Hit me up in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com to have more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. And uh, see you online. Connect me on the socials at lawrencesystems.com. Mm -hmm.